This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Watch to the end of the video to figure out how NordVPN can make your life easier and safer, and how to support the channel. G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to a plane that kind of goes under the radar, if you will. This is the F4J. The F4J is considered a bit of an oddball in the uh, top tier jets scene. It's not particularly remarkable in any way, shape or form, except for the fact that it has AIM-7Fs. The AIM-7Fs are a longer range version of the AIM-7E, I believe. It's just the base E, and it's just about it. It's got AIM-9Gs for its uh, best IR missile, which is nothing short of unremarkable. And of course, it has to carry an external gun pod. This plane, like all other 11.3s, carries a pulse Doppler radar, but at the same time, I've found it to be not quite as good as some of the other ones. There are other pulse Doppler radars that are, in my opinion, just a little bit better. They seem to, from experience, hold a lock that is a little bit more potent and is a little bit better at evading uh, things like notching. So, the F4J, it basically has the performance of an F4C, carries an external gun pod, has meh missiles, with the exception of, of course, its semi-active radar homing missiles, and even then it has a uh, kind of meh pulse Doppler radar. So, what the hell is this plane good for? Of course, like I said, it has the AIM-7Fs, but I don't tend to use the AIM-7Fs. In fact, I don't recommend using the AIM-7Fs at all, because they're just too slow for those closer in engagements, which are going to be more frequent in War Thunder at least. So you're going to be sticking to AIM-7E2 dogfights, and of course that's still going to limit you in that respect, but what's this plane good for then? Well, to be truthful, it's not particularly great at anything. But that's the beauty of this plane. You don't really have to be great at anything in top tier, because of the way the games play out. Especially we're looking at these early matches where you find that it tends to be missile jousting or it tends to be, you know, head-ons, 1v1s or, you know, 4v4s. And in this case, you can play the F4J as a support fighter. And a support fighter, it makes great. It's, it's as butchered as that is, that's a great support fighter. It really is. And there we go with that first missile being uh, a little bit off. You can see that the lock switches a little bit or moves away from the target, loses its accuracy, and uh, as a result, the first AIM-7E2 misses. I find this to happen a fair bit, and of course, now we have a J-35D coming in behind us and who's actually gaining on us because the J-35D is actually quite fast at sea level. Um, I believe it actually pulls out to something like 1350 before ripping or 1340. So it's nothing to sort of laugh at. But I will say, this thing does pale at altitude, so what I'm doing is I'm giving it a little bit more altitude and I can see that that MiG-23 is coming back, or a MiG-23 is coming back, and that is a perfect opportunity to go for the J-35D. Would you look at that? The missile is a little ambitious and so it doesn't strike home, but now he is barreling towards me and this is a great opportunity to try some more pulse Doppler radar fun. Here we go, we are just too close, so I'm not going to take it, and of course, it looks like he's done something to his wing. In the meantime, my teammates have decided that they want to go and die, and so the numbers are pretty much stacking against my favour. The J-35D is stopping me from going back to the MiG-23 and killing it, and that leaves me shit out of luck. Here we are in a fairly rough situation. I have one MiG-23 that I can maybe get a pulse Doppler kill on, and it looks like we are going to be successful. He's heading straight towards me, and no amount of late turning is going to save him from that. Maybe I can get a second one here. He's already sending a missile out, I believe. That is his uh, R60Ms, and I managed to get another fire. This gives me two kills and an enemy team to go up against. I'm going to start flaring here to get rid of that missile. I believe it's an R23R, or R24R, sorry, R24T. I send a missile anyway, just to... Uh, sheer luck it's starting to get desperate this plane really does not do well when it is stacked up against opponents like this we have heaps and heaps of enemies to fight here and it's just not going to end well i believe i'm the last enemy uh, ally on my team and this basically leaves me like i said shit out of luck now you do have plenty of flares and that is quite the bonus because this thing does need its flares it's not a dogfighting plane as such it is definitely more of a support fighter. Now, 
quick uh, missile there on the Su-22. And it's just time to try and take a few with me as I go. Try and get some more to uh, head down. And it looks like the MiG-23 MF and the Su-23 have both gone down. I crit the MLD. Can I crit another one? It looks like there's another MLD who has overcooked himself big time. So I managed to get him. And just as I turn around, there are plenty of enemies here left for some, uh, some more action. It looks like I'm not going to be much longer in this match. It's only a matter of time before the MiG-23s decide to sweep back their wings, or someone else from the distance missiles me. But you know what? That's an ace, and I managed to take one of them with me. Not too bad. But, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes, sometimes, your matches go a little bit better. Sometimes you get these matches where your team just does a heck and disappear, there's nothing you can do, and you're shit out of luck. But sometimes, it just seems to go your way. This was, I believe, a couple of matches after. I was, I was pretty pissed off, because I had multiple matches like this, and they were just the same thing. My team would die, I would be left alone, and in most of those cases, maybe I could take one with me. But, you know, we try and make the best of the situation that we have here, and I'm someone that likes to try and look on the bright side. It's not always possible, of course, but we're going to try and do that anyway. So, I'm flying at low altitude, trying to use the Pulse Doppler radar on this plane, and hopefully I can secure some enemies that are on the flanks. Someone that's maybe going after a teammate. Because this is what this plane is really good for. Even with the AIM-7Fs, you can do this type of thing at, uh, say, 7-8 kilometers, provided that your opponents are, you know, heading away from you or directly towards you, for example, where you have that range and your opponent isn't going to notch your radar and disrupt the signal. So we're just sort of panning around, gently looking for targets, maybe checking the RWR to make sure that there are no enemies that are locking us, and therefore that would indicate the presence of an enemy. But we're pretty much nothing on the radar at the moment, and you can see that uh, it's pretty damn quiet. But it won't be quiet for long. Now, note the clouds that I've just flown underneath and the clouds that are ahead of me. Personally, if I can avoid clouds, I think I would, but in this case, I think I was just too angry to uh, even even just in entertain that thought. Now, here we go, I think. I am screwed. I'm toast. I'm not going to get anything this game, and it's just going to go to shit because I got locks, and then the lock stops, and I thought, oh, that's, that's kind of weird. What's going on here? So I'm going to press, go for a little bit of closure, see if I can, you know, reduce that gap between me and this opponent maybe get a better radar lock so I can perhaps send a missile out his way and uh, get some express post before he can deliver. And it might have been that EJ. It might have just been that EJ. And he's getting kills. He's going ham. And I think I need to do something to stop this. Is he coming back towards me? He is coming back towards me. And this means that I need to really pull something out of my ass really quickly. I've got my uh, ACM mode on. And it looks like I'm just too close to even bother with a uh, Pulse Doppler radar missile. I can just see that afterburner, I can just see the supersonic cloud, and that just gives me enough opportunity to radar lock him. Of course, I can't lock him with an IR missile through the clouds, but I can try with a Pulse Doppler missile, and it's just, it's just not going to work. He's too close, and we're doing some strange maneuvers. And of course, these missiles are intended for long-range use. The AIM-7 is not considered a dogfighting missile, even though there is a dogfight uh, variant of it. So I'm just going to chill in the clouds. I'm just going to follow him. This is the only guy that I want, and it looks like I have managed to deliver. An MLD appears above my head. I can spot the uh, afterburner, and I'm going to try and send an AIM-9G his way. It's not really looking very nice for me. I finally get the lock. I send it on its way, and the AIM-9G tracks beautifully and kills my number two. This is pretty much perfect until a JA-37 comes out of the clouds and uh, kills my MiG-23 MF buddy here. So I'm going to roll over, and just as he rolls over, he rolls into the ground, which is an absolute true gamer maneuver, giving uh, me a little bit of peace of mind, though, because if he had sat behind me, there is a very little chance that I would have survived. This plane is absolutely not meant to be getting in situations like this. What you're meant to be doing is sitting at range and uh, almost jousting people, almost like picking off the ones on the outskirts and using that, uh, I want to say speed, but you have to be traveling quickly, 
going in and out of the battlefield, maybe coming from altitude and dropping a couple of missiles here and there on targets that might be uh, of opportunity, let's say. This plane lacks the performance to dominate a battlefield, it lacks the missiles, and it lacks that uh, radar, of course. I mean, it's got a Pulse Doppler radar, but the Pulse Doppler radar isn't as remarkable as, say, the F-40J Kais, or perhaps the JA-37Cs, or it doesn't have uh, IRST or MTI mode, much like the uh, MiG-23 MLD. So you are, in some cases, shit out of luck. This plane does have great potential, but it is, like I said, to be had on the periphery. The MiG-21MF does a heckin' unlucky right behind me there, and this MiG-21MF, oh, MiG-23MF, looks like he's got maybe a little bit more brain. No, he doesn't. He's, uh, he's flying an event plane in the German tech tree. So chances are he's bought it as his first jet, and uh, there goes the next kill. It looks like this MiG-27, though, has to be our next target. This F4J is going to struggle in a dogfight against the MiG-27, especially considering that it is a lighter MiG-23, and it is still got some plenty good missiles. It's got R60Ms, I believe, and it's also got that GSH-6 30mm cannon, which is extremely potent. It packs an absolute punch. So I'm going to send an AIM-9G on his way. It's not really going to make the target at all, it's uh, a bit of a flop in this respect. I don't have a potent enough lock for an, a, a Sparrow. For some odd reason, I'm not getting my two circles, so I'm not going to fire. I need to be conservative with my missiles, and I don't know who else is going to come from where. Now, I get a sneaking suspicion that there's got to be someone else. And, uh, wow, wasn't that a lucky shot here. MiG-23MF is coming in pretty damn quick. R60M here, couple of flares does the trick, and of course, no afterburner in the meantime. The MiG-27M goes down, and the MiG-23MF is the last one left. So, this guy, this guy is patient zero. Target number one, the most wanted. So, we're going to be chasing him, because that's all that's left. I can't really get a good lock. I think the clouds are blocking it this time. This missile, this, this radar just... I, I genuinely don't know what's going on. I feel like this radar lacks something. But it, it's just something. It just feels crap compared to the other ones. But I have three missiles. And so when he inevitably either hits the border or I somehow catch up to him or he just magically turns around wanting a fight, which will be seemingly what he does, uh, this gives me an opportunity for a head-on missile. And of course, I've still got some flares and chaff left, which means that I am going to win, provided that he doesn't use a radar missile. I'm pretty much guaranteed a victory, because all I have to do is turn the afterburner off, flare, and then I've pretty much got it made. So, waiting for the MiG-23 to turn around, it looks like he's going to close the distance quite well. I think I have a pretty decent radar lock. It's given me the two green cir or the two circles with a little bit of red. He's notching a little bit, but it's not really going to make a difference, and there he goes. This is the kind of shit that happens when you have a little bit of uh, teammate to support you on the side. So, ladies and gentlemen, F4J, support plane. Sit, sit on the periphery. Use what little speed you have. Use that little bit of pulse doppler radar. If you want, use the AIM-7s, but I would prefer the AIM-7E2 Sparrow dogfights. And uh, go to town. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. I'm sure you've all heard of NordVPN before and the myriad of reasons why you might want it. It might be the ability to access region lock content such as movies, games, news, and more. Did you know that depending on your location and even your device, you may be charged more or less for being from a certain place or owning a certain device? Imagine all of the money you could save, especially on stuff such as flights and hotels. For me though, the best bit about NordVPN is the extra layer of security you can get with it. NordVPN is an excellent choice not only for you, but for someone who's less aware of some of the dangers while being online, such as dodgy malware websites or suspicious links. If you have someone in your family that's older and may not be as tech-savvy as you are, NordVPN is an excellent way to avoid getting a call from your grandparents asking why there's a ransomware message on their PC. NordVPN is the gold standard VPN. Nord's no throttling up to 10 gigabit per second servers, the ability to be used on six devices and on every major platform, including your Android TV, makes it an excellent choice. It even works in China. So if the rare Chinese viewers of mine want to better experience the world free from censorship, 
NordVPN has got you covered. Head over to nordvpn.com slash Spitflyer for an extra free month when you purchase a two-year plan. So, what are you waiting for? Support the channel and use a service that will make your life easier and safer. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. So ladies and gents, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, of course, to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for feeding the algorithm. And of course, thank you for all of your donations and monetary support to the channel. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, take care. And I'll catch you next time.